what do you go? Hello, person. It's your favorite game developer in the whole world. Wizard Foo, making the game Wraithbinder. And I've got a local server running while I got two clients here popping up. And we have, a wow, tons of progress made since last stream. Been focusing every single day on multiplayer lately. We have two clients that can stay in sync for quite a long time. We can fight enemies, do other kinds of stuff, and everybody stays in sync and everything's looking really good. And um, 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 we have dealt with a lot of desync, so a lot of different little issues that cause the, the client to sort of diverge a little bit those have all been dealt with um another thing that's been dealt with is the pause unpause so i'm not sure if you saw but when this first started up um since both clients were loading up and um taking a little bit extra per tick to do certain things like loading up models and there we go got another unpause pause um can cause basically it can cause things to to pause right if one client arrives at a certain tick and doesn't have input from another player then it will pause and then the other client after a few ticks will pause as well and then they will send a message to the server saying hey we're, we're not ready so one client sends a message to the server saying hey i'm not ready then the other client sends a message saying i'm not ready and once the server receives both messages for both clients that they're not ready, then it can send out the message saying, hey, I know you're both not ready, but what I need you to do is both of you get to this tick before you can resume. And then it actually gets both those clients up to that tick and resume and resumes the game by sending another uh, message ready. Here's one of them. This is pause. This pauses at tick 115 there. And let's go to tick 115 on this one. So this one paused at tick 107. So that's kind of the kind of an example, right? One of these clients paused at one tick 107 because it didn't receive network input up to tick um beyond tick 107. So it arrived at that tick. It's like, hey, I have no more network input. I got to pause. And this one's like um, after a second, it realizes, hey, wait a second. This guy hasn't been responding in a second. Pauses at tick 115. Let's look at the, what the server said about all that. Might, uh, yeah, yeah. So the server received those two mess. We got the highlight what we're talking about here. Boop, boop, boop. There, tick 107. One client said, yep, I'm, a, I'm, I'm paused. I'm at tick 107. The other one paused at tick 115. The server said, you know what? We're going to have to res we're gonna have to resume at tick 115. So what happens to the client that was behind this one, 107, it has to catch up. So where does it see receive that? Here we go. It receives the message from the server says, oh, I need to be catched up all the way to tick 115. And it fast forwards to tick 115. So it actually what it does, is it goes into its um, got a we got a new function here in tick called tick fast forward. And what tick fast forward does, is it says, OK, I know you need to tick, you need to fast forward to certain tick. So what I'm going to do is create a fast forward accumulator, which is the amount of time in microseconds that needs to be uh, made up for to get us to that new tick that we need to be at. And then when we run the fast forward accumulator, it's like a special um, instance of tick 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 tick. Basically, the, the basic concept of tick tick is that it takes the accumulator and um, decorates the accumulator by microseconds per tick each time and then executes a tick. So all fast forward accumulator is doing is resetting the accumulator to be the fast forward accumulator, turning off the pause and letting the tick run to catch up. And then it goes and um, at the end, once it once it's done with the, all those ticks, it resets its fast forward accumulator and sets that back to zero. So um, that's how that that's how tick, that's how client can catch up together. And then that's how they can resume on the same tick as well. So we'll see where it says unpause for that thing. So this unpaused the tick 115. After a while, it got all caught up. Its ticks were all good. It sent that message to the server. And this is what we're talking about here. So after a second, the server receives messages from both clients saying they're ready they're they're up with the new ticks they're ready to get resumed and um it sends a message off both to both clients saying okay go ahead and resume and then um both clients do so we can actually track exactly what time that they're they're um they're resuming at as well so this one resumed at 1138063.95 and let's see where this one did 1138 1138063.86 pretty close within thin like 10 milliseconds of each other which is a little bit too much for my liking and i've got a note in my uh my notes to get that uh solved like why, why are they why are they diverging by even 10 milliseconds that's something that should sometimes it gets up to 30 milliseconds they're off by so 
I need to figure out what the heck's going on with that because we're using exactly the same clock on both of these. Both of these clients are being run on the same dang computer. They should be resuming on exactly the same tick because that's how, that's how the math is supposed to work. It's supposed to accumulate exactly the right amount and blah, 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 blah. So I know that could be possibly due to the resuming because we are resuming with a fast forward accumulator, which is sort of like changing its accumulator, but that's not actually the issue. So we are, we're actually diverging before we even pause, we'll see that some one client will get 30 milliseconds ahead or something like that. So there's some other issue with the, perhaps with the fundamentally the way this is actually accumulating time in the tick.cpp. So an issue there for later. What we're working on today is going to the main menu and we're going to be able to create a match from the main menu and then have the other client join our match from the other main menu. And is there anything else I wanted to mention? We you mention the fast forwarding, unpausing, clients staying mostly in sync. Yeah, yeah, okay, we're ready. Uh, enough talking. Let's start coding, shall we? Let's go to the main menu and get this all started up. So we're gonna go to, uh, um, we're gonna get the client set up so they're back at Z zero. And oh, that won't matter because we're starting from the main menu. Okay, whatever. We're going to start off skip menu zero and we're going to skip to character. Z skip menu zero, skip to character one. Playback, we've got this guy playing back, this guy not playing back. We're gonna set those to zero. Two clients still, great. Should be enough to get us started. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run the code I have existing. It uh, probably won't work, but we'll see what, what happens. What we're gonna do is we're gonna basically launch both these clients and from the main menu, we're gonna try and set up a match and get things going. What we were doing before that is loading up both clients in this thing called auto join where it skips the menu and it, uh, it instantly creates a match for both clients. So it's kind of a special case that I'm only ever using in debug mode. So, all right, let's get this started then. We're gonna maybe try click creating a match with this client. We're gonna start a co-op public match. That was really weird, but did it work? No, that is, what the hell is going on here? I don't know what happened. That was really, really, really weird. Let's see what happens when we try and join a game over here. Join automatic. Again, we've got this weird, like, let's leave the world, let's join back into the world, and then, uh, what? That kind of work? No, we're not in the same, same world together, but they did sync up and sort of start working. Must have something to do with, I haven't ever touched this code where they start a match together from the main menu in a while. And since then, I've added this whole feature where a client can start exactly on the same tick. There's a whole join, let's let's join, we're ready. Okay, I'm ready, you're ready, let's go thing that's happening. And what it must be is that we have, that hasn't sort of been reconciled with the, the ship mode, ship world. That client died, yeah, that, that client even died. Okay, well, there's a, there's a lot to deal with here. Oh, that's another thing I, I haven't mentioned. This is kind of a really, really big deal. Um, we have peer to peer now. So we have, we're actually piercing ice or you were uh, called piercing ice. Is that actually what it is? I don't know. It's, it's, it's using NAT network address translation to, um, to, to basically send messages between two peers on this, uh, that are behind a router. So that's a big thing. We got peer to peer code working, which basically means that clients can send messages together faster than they can by having to route them all the way through the server. There's still a good mode where, um, we can still use the server for relaying messages if, um, if we're going into PVP mode. So I've still got, so I've still got two different modes. One, we've got this client server model where we can send, always send messages to the server and we're never sending messages to other clients. We've also got this peer to peer mode where we can send messages directly to clients and have some messages arrive faster that way. So that's a big thing that should make people um, playing this game with other people faster and more responsive eventually. So still some things to get done before that actually all takes effect. But anyways, peer to peer is a thing now. Let's try to figure out what happened. Let's say, let's see, uh, what we, okay. Started everything up. Okay. Here we were joining a match. We get a join reply, change the mode. Probably want to go back to net, net verbosity one. Cause our log is filling up with some of these tick messages. We don't need to see all this detail. It's on. Wow. This is a big clue right here. It says world ready, but not multiplayer. Okay, let's go to world. There it is. Okay, we're in ch win check ready. Hey, space my name. I just saw your message. There. Hey, it's going well, man. Things are going good. Starting on working on some code to get two clients to start together from the main menu. How are you doing today? Okay, let's see that again without all these extra tick messages and stuff. And oh, I also need to see. Okay, so it gets to check ready. You doing fancy? You just got achievements put in your game? Sweet. Oh man, isn't that a cool feeling? Okay, I see what's kind of happening. We go to the like, what's happening is like the players start to warp out. They think they're exiting the menu and then they kind of go back into the menu for a second until clients join together. 
and then they load into this world, but they're not on the same they're not on the same world. This is kind of weird. Both in them um, on the ship, but we're not together in the same multiplayer match. So still trying to figure out what's going on here. Yeah, dude, feels like a real game, right? Nice work, nice work. I know the API is that's a, one of those that's part of their API that once you figure it out, you're like, yeah, I got things. Um, and then there's there's similar APIs for GOG, Xbox, Switch, PlayStation, but they're all a little bit different. You kind of got to write your own set of code for every one of those platforms or or just stick with steam that's a really it's a really nice and easy thing to do just say no to all other platforms oh i forgot about ios and android there's two more platforms with their own achievements apis okay well, uh, that's a, what, where can we start at here what can we get what what kind of like what kind of branch can we grab onto at the bottom of this tree to start climbing it, it starts changing the world and then it says ready, but not multiplayer. Oh, that's because it said the tick. So that means it's synced up with the server. It's tick. And which is so there's a bunch of places it calls check ready. One of them is on priority loaded, which it already did a while ago. So it already checked on priority loaded. Then it did on set tick. And that's well, that's the check ready that we're looking at. Okay, so we're getting the getting to set tick. And then it says I'm ready, but this is not multiplayer. I think it's not multiplayer. Oh, it's it it doesn't ever think it's ready if it's in mode void okay hold on what happens if we uncomment that you uploaded the wrong version oh don't worry man it's really pretty easy to um change those you can you can just say you can roll back too you can like if you if you actually committed that on the steam back end you can just roll back to one of your older uploads oops oops uh i thought i pressed the down arrow Let's try it again Launch it again. Come on, clients. Get in sync. Starting these matches from the main menu. Cam. Down. New game. Down. Crash deed. We crash deed it. Supposed to assert the tick is paused. Oh, somehow we're not we don't have the pause right anymore. So we're supposed to start. Oh wow. I'm not I'm not even sure if we're actually starting the match correctly. One client right now. It's been quite a while since I even started the game from the main menu. So there's a new thing. Um it's since last week, I think. The game actually starts up paused, so it doesn't start its tick counting its tick until it unpauses when the game when the clients are actually ready. So see what happens if we just start a brand new game. This might crash. No, it's fine. Okay, that's good to know. It does work. But what if we start a game and we're actually loading up to the ship? You lucked out. You uploaded the right zip. Oh, it's very ugly. I hear you. Uh, no, man, that's happened so much to me too. You're like, you're working on something. You're like, whoops, forgot about that thing. Other thing I was I was working on that I just uploaded. Sorry, thousands of players. Oops. Oh, that works too. Okay. It's only when we do multiplayer that it's getting its pause incorrect. I think there's only a couple places where it actually calls set pause. Oh. Oh, look at that. Here's a, here's a fatal flaw. So we have this bit of code that sets paused whenever a menu is shown. If we're not multiplayer and not void but we set pause to false for not multiplayer but we forgot this whole is not void thing so that's pretty important wow i hope that was the i hope that was the issue yeah hope, hopefully no one saw it cross your fingers <laughs> hopefully no one saw that look away there's no one behind the curtain uh, uh, oh i forgot to set two clients wow okay, get with the program that come on time to start coding two clients doing it yo boygus cool man Man, hey, good to see you. Buegas, I gotta thank you like a million times. I don't know if it's, I don't know if I've seen you since you made that one suggestion about uh, using the mouse to aim. Have I told you about that? It'll crash. Oh, oh, that wasn't that. Dang, wasn't that. Okay, you're listening. Oh, okay, I didn't tell you. Wait, man, that was one of the best suggestions. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I wanted to thank you as soon as you came back on, like, uh, but it's been a while since we've seen each other. But anyways, um, yeah, dude, that was one of the best suggestions that anyone has ever given me as far as like feedback for the game. Uh, just for people that are listening here, this is a, this is a suggestion that um, Boygus gave that you use the mouse to aim with. I'll even show you what it looks like now, Boygus. This is pretty cool. And it turned out that most people that played the last demo and we had tons of new players that played the last demo because everything started blowing up on Twitter. It was really awesome. Like it was such a rad beta. 
This is back in uh, late March. Um, but so now you can aim with the mouse. So you can actually, oh, I need to get, switch my keyboard mode to actually do this. Reset to WASD. So yeah, you can you can move around with WASD and you can aim with the mouse. I don't have a sword or anything. This would be better if I show you with this with the, a bow or something like that. Uh, but man, oh, like so many people prefer to play with the keyboard and mouse, even if they have a gamepad. And that really surprised me as a developer because my preference as a developer or as a player is to play with a gamepad. I always prefer to play with a gamepad on most games I play. So it really, really surprised me. And, um, but adding this whole mouse aiming thing is, was so, so incredible for the, for the game because most people prefer to play it that way. And you can, you can run and aim, you can aim a different direction than you're running now too, which is really, really helpful. And that works with the gamepad or the mouse. So that's super duper awesome. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your suggestion. It was amazing. I'm glad I finally did it. I'm glad I listened to you because it surprised me how many people have that preference. Yeah, man. Thanks again. Thank you so much. So, okay, back to this multiplayer code here. So we still have a pause issue. We're trying to get two clients to start together from the main menu. And we have a, we have two clients that can play together once, once they get playing we can have a good little play session going on players stay in sync things are really working well so far there lots of work the last eight weeks have all been put into that but we have this one little tiny issue where if we try and start them from the main menu they aren't they aren't starting up together cor correctly so that's what we're working on right now so there's some issue where it sets pause there's okay there's where it sets pause true on the first tick it says pause on first let's make sure that anywhere that we have set pause we're going to set do a little log statement whenever it's whenever we pause or unpause so we can just get like on the figure out which one of these is the the one that's causing us to be off oh wait a second on first tick oh and this is unpaused this one too unpause thanks man appreciate it good night have a good one thanks for stopping by all right it pause 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 this ought to help a little oh i remember the on first tick thing i wonder if that gets reset like we're going to the main menu and because we're loading into world void it's triggering this callback called on first tick which pauses the game whoa that was weird did it try and load so the clients not loading up now what's up with that get something else here clients to oh yeah so that skip zero and on first tick i want to make sure this gets reset in tick calls hook tick on first tick we want to reset did first tick on tick clear yeah yeah it does that already did first tick equals false. Okay. 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 Ah, going on. Press the down arrow and the. Oh, I switched my keyboard controls. Right. Okay. I gotta switch back to my old keyboard controls. What I'm comfortable with is the Vim keys. Vim keys. H, J, K, and L for moving around instead of WASD. <laughs> that press continue. Okay, down, new game, co-op. Uh, we're still, well, of course, we're still doing this assertion failure. Figure out why now. We've got some log statements put into the log. Paused on first tick. I like seeing that. Unpaused on menu shown. That doesn't seem right to me. No, oh, that's unpaused on menu hidden. Wait, unpausing. What mode is it? If it's unpausing, it shouldn't be pausing in mode void. And we are, yeah, we've we'll, we'll, got to find out what, what what mode this is. Words, look up. Words, see modes, mode, world, get mode, type, dot s, that up here too. Paused on menu shown, mode. Okay. Slowly but surely, we're working this out. It seems to be an issue that's what's happening is since we're dealing with being on the main menu, we're already in the menu. So we don't want to ever pause or unpause the game while we're in the main menu. And somehow we are still pausing. So I think it has to do with the fact that it might be switching into ship mode or transition mode, maybe. Uh, unpaused on menu shown. Did I, oh my God, did I put this in world too? Oh, oh my God. Um, what is this? On clients ready. Okay, once we get this though, this is gonna be a beautiful thing to be able to start the game from the main menu with two clients. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be glorious. We will all celebrate this day forever. Mode void. Then we get this world join type public. Join reply, changing world to ship. It appears that all we need to do, make sure we're not pausing or unpausing if we are in world mode void. Perhaps that that's probably part of the equation. Probably this is probably a multi. This is like finding a whole bunch in, uh, of needles in a haystack. We'll see. Maybe that was it. That's all there was. I highly think that there's.
there's something else. Okay. Oh, it's still, still an issue. I'm surprised though. I really thought that would have done some more. Figure out what's happened there. Unpause. What's it's still unpaused? What? Oh, God. Man, it's like, is my brain awake today or what? I'm talking. I think I'm making coherent sentences. Oh, well, what can you do? Some days you're not as sharp as you usually are. Let's try that one more time. Oh. Huh? Okay. We, that's really weird. Uh, now the whole main menu doesn't work. Oh, yesterday you could barely talk. Tell me about it, dude. Okay. I got a really good feeling that that's because it's not even unpausing. Let's see what happened here. Pause. Pause on first tick. And it just stays paused. My instinct is to try this here. If it's world void and mode void, then we can unpause. Wait, hold on. World. Let's show what world we and what mode is gonna be world get world type now we're showing what world and mode we're in when we unpause from checking ready but i want to unpause if we are uh, i don't actually know let's just run it and show what what modes we're in start everything off a tick zero pause yep that's the tick zero i'm thinking of so we unpause when clients are ready in world void mode void sort of thought and then okay so we're going into going into the into the main menu which is a world void mode void then we start changing into mode ship world dungeon i think when we start changing the world we might need to set paused again because it's expecting that when we start checking ready take a look at that code check world checking ready that is if it is it it's it needs to assert that it is still paused because it needs that for clients to start in sync i think what we need to do is go when we go to change world not this outer change world there's another change world this world change world um we need to tick set pause let's give it a shot and keeping with our current convention we're going to say whenever we we're going to log a statement whenever we pause or unpause and when we're logging out what mode we already know what mode we are because we just have a log statement about changing mode right there so we don't need these extra uh, log statements uh, extra log arguments just set pause true there okay yeah changing when you change world you start initiating initiating the whole process where we need to we change into the new world then we 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 trigger some loads some priority loads we also trigger setting tick with the server hopefully that's actually happens i'm not sure if that's happens that's that's necessary and then we check ready and once and then we unpause so we need to be paused when we start changing worlds that seems to make sense to me oh look at that finally did things that seemed right okay weird but sort of was in sync there all right well oh we got a net pause that's why we crashed at that time okay that seemed really good what happened was we in the top left client we initiated a new game and it closed the curtains started waiting for the other player and then as soon as the other player started joining both the clients started their whole dance of starting on the same tick things went weird because it went it sort of went back to the main menu for a second and then closed its curtains again and then opened its curtains in a really sort of a halfway in the ship but not quite all the way in the ship something still really weird there see what we can uncover here in the log pause on the first tick we unpause when the clients are ready a world void mode void and then we pause at change world we set tick i'm going to turn off peer-to-peer -peer mode for for the non set peer mode we're not going to go into peer mode peer-to-peer -peer. we don't want to just trigger this is kind of like flooding my log statements with peer-to-peer -peer stuff that we don't really care about right now we're just going to go in the old client server mode for now okay so we pause a change world and we pause again we didn't even unpause so we so okay wait we changing into world oh we're changing into world ship or mode ship and then oh and then so we waited for a second then we after a second we got this join reply oh uh, yeah we definitely got our we, get it, we got our join reply with the other player and then we change start changing the world because we're still in mode void why are we changing the world again okay this seems wrong to me this is like so we're we're changing world from void to ship and then we're also changing the mode again from void to ship after the other player joins that seems wrong and it's all from because we got the join reply so we need to 
What really needs to happen is we need to sit on the main menu and wait until we're happy with how many players have joined our match. So the player that's creating the match needs to create the match, send, let the server know that they're creating a match and that they're waiting for more players. And then when a new player joins, the first player needs to see, hey, that I now have one other player in my match. And as soon as they, they feel like they're ready enough, they can hit the start the match button. That's how it all needs to play out. And on the other client's end, they need to see a list of matches that they can join. So when they go to join a match, they can see that list where they want to, a bunch of different players they could join and choose one match to join and they join in. I suppose it's probably best if everybody clicks ready too. So you, jo you join into the match and both the players have to have to click ready until the match actually starts. That's basically what should all be happening. Yo, Sushi, what's up, buddy? Welcome, 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 welcome. I'm trying to work my way through getting two clients to start multiplayer from the main menu. And so far we've got everything starting, but it's in this special mode where we skip the menu. So now we're bringing the main menu back into the equation, trying to start a multiplayer match the right way where both clients are kind of like saying, hey, I want to join this match and we're ready and all that. So that's what's going on right now. Yeah, things are good here too. Okay, so that's what needs to happen. We need to basically have a ready screen. I actually already have a ready screen to tell you the truth. I have a ready screen from way back in the day when I had split screen multiplayer working. So right now we go into menu which menu is it that we're going into menu character selected oh uh, it's game create game join okay so there's menu game create where you've got some choices to create solo public pvp all of those going go ah these have some special code which actually starts a, a world off of right there that's not what we want to actually do we want to we want to go to another menu where we have a ready we're ready readying up so it could probably be the same menu for both clients too so the client that creates the match sees the screen that's sort of a blank at first it doesn't have any other players inside maybe it just has their name inside the match and then as soon as another player joins their name also appears on that screen and the whole time there could be a ready button at the bottom so if a player chooses ready they can start before anyone else even joins or they can wait for other players to join and click ready and then yeah for the other player they could see the exact same thing they they would have the same screen with both players names and a ready button so as soon as all players click ready then the match actually could kick off and go into its changing world mode and that would trigger a whole sequence sequence where they start in sync and yeah this is kind of what needs to happen so we need we've got a menu we need a menu game create menu game join menu game ready and we also have another menu we're gonna have to create called uh menu game select where when a player is actually selecting a match to join the player that's actually joining ha will have a choice of which match they want to join and we're going to need a, a whole menu for that as well so we'll get that one done later so we need this menu game ready okay we're going to start off by creating the method for menu game ready okay we need when our back menu uh let's leave it as this for now It'd be nice if our back main menu went directly back to game join or game create. But for now, I don't really know exactly how to d to distinguish between what was the previous menu. We might have been joining or we might have been creating. So I'm not quite sure yet to how to do that. So let's leave that for later. So we need a title for this menu. Let's go to strings. So game ready. We're going to list the other players names and there's going to be a ready button. Okay, so we're going to have our title. It says it's the game ready title and we've got a, a ready button and we're going to need a list of players, which I don't know how to get just yet. We're going to need to figure that out. How are we, we need to wait for the server to return us a list of players and how that's all going to work i'm not sure yet so we're just going to create a vector of strings first for this is our list of players player names and we're going to push a bunch of choices uh we might as well push back our own name players that push back uh, uh community get username uh, clickety clackety 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 clickety clickety clackety clickety clack clickety click 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 Sorry, everybody. My internet died again. Midstream. I think I need to like upgrade my router or something. Something really weird happened to my... Anyways. Excuses? Excuses? 
I've restarted the stream. Here we are again, making some code to have two clients, like start one client starts a match and then goes into this special zoo screen called the ready, the menu game ready screen where it will be waiting for other players. And as soon as they're ready, they click ready. And everybody, as soon as everybody clicks ready, the, the match starts, boom, it's so working on. So let's get this, this code written. We've got a, we've got a title for this menu. We have a, now a list of players. This is a, this needs to be c.txt equals player. And when we press this, we need to show that we're, we're ready. We need a static vector for this. It would be better if we had a static over structure. Okay, let's do a little struct call. Let's call it play ready. Put whatever we want here, like string name. Uh, let's call that username. String username, pool ready. And uh, that's good enough to start. And we got a static vector of player readies, players. And we can, if not players, we can at least push our own player back and our own player. Yeah, yeah. Player.username equals community get username. Uh, and ready was going to be false. That's going to be by default. That looks good. Okay. And then when we do this on uh, c.txt equals player.username. And when we do on press, save plus join world, we might want to join our world point. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not even check all the readies just yet. We've got join world or join world. Yeah, this might actually work with we'll just join auto for now. And then we're going to get rid of this automatic join button we are gonna have a cancel button the entire time it's gonna do our on back so good okay so some things um the game join menu no longer needs this so see now we're gonna have an on forward which takes us to menus menu game ready so this auto thing will take us there get rid of this so we got a cancel button don't need the actions on on tick actually let's uh come at these out for a second till i really figure out what i'm doing <laughs> yeah that looks good okay we're gonna do the same or similar thing for the game create menu the game create menu also is going to just put us into the menu game ready all right uh, that's all we need okay so both those menus are going to take us to this game ready menu where once we click ready then we start off and do the auto join and all that okay now this is if this actually works the next step will be making this all sync up with the server so the server is going to we're going to say send a message to the server saying hey i want to create a, a match i'm a player i'm waiting for some other players and then we actually we've already got the message for this it's called message join and then the player will respond saying okay you're you're in the match you're waiting for some players and then as soon as another player joins then um it should add to the list in the menu so let's see what happens if we go new game co-op public players wizard foo cool i think i guess if i click on my own name it, it'll oh we need we needed a ready button <laughs> okay i forgot to add the ready button but anyways let's go join game automatic there's client two i'm gonna click enter and see what happens and same thing with wizard foo i'm gonna click enter and they do do this whole weird dance again where they kind of go back to the main menu and then do this weird thing and they go to this almost in the ship world and then they die so but we are on the right track we're getting things started the right way so the next thing we need is a, a ready button kind of like this automatic join button and then they die right <laughs> yeah that's what's going on here uh, uh, hey let's do this here let's multiply this list of players we're gonna have everybody's player name grayed out and then on forward are going to be is going to be a no op enabled false so it's just going to be a player's name with no ability to the button so then we want this button here's red this is our ready button ready text is menu game red ready button think ready button to, to do set the mission key and all that yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we, that's going to be good, but I think we really need to start on joining or creating a match and watching as other players join our, our match. So right now, the way that we got this message from the server called on message join reply. Yeah. And this, we get this, this sort of, the sort of a join reply message. We process it sets number of humans, set of players. All of this is geared towards two players joining a match automatically while skipping the menu. This is the debug version of two clients getting in sync. So we're now we're, we're creating the release mode dance where we have a little dance where these two clients got to do some stuff. To, it's a mating ritual. That's what this is. Man, it's hot. To, okay. Talking about mating is making me hot. Oh, uh, 
What a fun day. All right. Um, so got this, this, we need to process our join reply. The number of humans. Can we do all this stuff from the main menu? We could set a seed from the main menu. It's okay. We could set number of humans from the main menu. I think yeah. we can set is network. We can save network crew data. We can set player indices. Yeah. All this stuff we could do from, from the main menu. The one thing we don't want to do from the main menu is create the world. I think, I think this is as simple as this. Basically we want to say if C skip menu, then create the world. Otherwise, otherwise we don't need to create the the world until we click the ready buttons on the the main menu. So this is going to give us the world is going to receive its join reply, and then it's going to know what other character, what other players have joined. We just need to know what players usernames are in that match. So let's create a function maybe around this point. Looks good. Okay, we're gonna do a void get get match players. Does this belong in the in world? World is the one doing this whole processing of the join reply. So yeah, this is probably the best place to put this for now at least. We'll do a vector of strings for this. And yeah, we're gonna let's go we're gonna call it players. I was thinking maybe renaming it to usernames, because that's all we're returning just so far, but we might return some other data later, so let's call this get match players and a vector of strings called players that we're gonna fill up. And then in world.cpp, we got this process join reply. World get match players. Yeah, so we're gonna loop through in message join reply dot players. We have a vector of message join players. Forget what those are exactly are, are the, that structure. Player with the string ID, username, ID identity initials i think we just want the username items equipment yeah just the username so players dot push back player dot username we could probably do players dot clear at the beginning and i think what we need to do is if we do receive a join reply and we are not skipping the menu and we are actually it doesn't even matter for skipping the menu if we're even if if the uh, uh, auto ref m equals menu get any basically we want to see if the if the menu oh, there's already a message called m so menu dot id equals menus menu game ready we want to basically just restart the main the menu so that it refreshes itself and says gets the new list of players this is basically some code that says refresh menu game ready and i think we can call menus show menu dot cam index menus or no, just menu dot id all this or show all right menus show i think that's the function we want and menu get menu show m e func not net. yeah yeah said menu sync you see menu show that's the way it's supposed to go let's wait let's look up some other places that call menus show i want to see some other places just so I'm, i remember that i'm doing this right oh we can also pass in an entity uh right that would just give us either way we need the menu we need the uh both of these methods here call this menu show m e funk version okay i think that'll do so we've got two things now. We've got function in world, which can peek into our message join reply and look at the player usernames and push them back into a vector of strings. And we've also got this other functionality where if we are at the menu game ready, we're going to refresh the menu game ready whenever we receive this reply from the server. So then we go into menus.cpp and our, our menu game ready. We want to, this is where we get our play. Uh, player names. So let's do another vector of string username. Yeah, usernames. Uh, what well, we're gonna call world get match players usernames, and then so we need to we need to somehow modify our player ready vector. We need to look through all those player readies, and if a username, we also need a string identity. Yeah. Okay. We need to we need this whole this whole structure here needs to be part of world so that we can share this effectively. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna have a structure called player ready. It's a string identity, a string username, and a bool ready. Gosh, I think we need to actually extend the join join reply so it has whether the player is actually ready as well. So they can join the match and send another message saying that they're ready. Or we could create a brand new message. Okay, let's uh, that's that's step two. 
Step one is just getting these guys fill up this player ready structure. Okay, at the big, top of this, we need to forward declare structure so that we can do get match players as a vector of player readies. Oh, you know what? Make that a const vector of player readies so that the world can be responsible for this. All right, then we can do a static, static ready players. And let's call this get ready players. Okay, which means we need to, when we process our join reply, to realize we need another method called clear ready players and then when we go to menu game join we can call world clear ready players same thing for menu game create that'll make sure that this ready player structure gets cleared when whenever we're starting a new game now we've got this process join reply where we're going to loop through what's n n is the number of player size e okay yeah and for each i n we're going to the oh it's going to be the the join player is message join reply players i uh, then we want to loop through our we want to basically go into our list of ready players and if this join player does not yet exist then we push back a new and if if the player does exist then we want to we want to reference that existing player and if the player if any player no longer exists then we need to remove it from the list Okay, so we're gonna we wanna basically create a little bit of code called a sync up ready players with join player. First thing we wanna do is loop through the join the ready players and see if if there's if there's an existing player. Uh, we want to get make this erase if ready players p and we wanna create a new function to say static bool join player does join player exists based on an identity an identity string so we want to loop through all of the message join reply players and say if player dot identity equals identity then return true otherwise return false okay so then we want to erase all players that don't exist in the current join players so that way if we start off um and we have a list of players and we're correct we're some people have clicked ready some people haven't and maybe one of the players drops out of the match before we start the match then this is going to erase them from that list of our players both um so that yeah so the the, the player so that our, our list of players is correct when somebody drops basically so that's does not does join player exist p dot identity uh, Okay, I like it. Okay, so now we're looping through and we want to do something called get join player. No, get ready player. Yeah, so we're gonna make another quick function. Static player ready ref get ready player given an identity. And we're gonna do the same thing. It's kind of like similar to this method, but we're looping through the ready players and we're saying if the ready player dot identity equals identity, then we return player. Otherwise we return a new identity. Really, this should be called push ready player because it might push to the to the vector. So here we go. Auto ref player equals ready players dot push back and return player stuff. OK, now we can use that function there and we're just going we got our joiner player and now we got auto ref ready player equals push join push ready player given the players to join players identity boom okay you now we got a ready player push back into our list and we if the ready player well we need to set up a few things like ready player dot identity equals join player dot identity and ready player dot username equals join player dot username ready player dot ready we want to leave alone so that means that if a player has been in our chat room or in it's kind of our lo our lobby. This is really what it is. It could be all called lobby player, really. So yeah, I probably should rename all this to lobby. Anyways, if somebody join, if somebody has already joined, and then this list gets refreshed, it will keep their ready value as it was. So if a player joins and another player was already ready, and that player will stay as already ready, and the new player will have to click ready for it all to be hundred percent ready to go. So we want menus. So we're clearing ready players back in that other method. That's another function. Oops. Here we go. Okay. Now we're back to 
We don't even need to create a static vector anymore. World is now responsible for that. So we can say auto ref ready players equals world get ready players. That's it. That keeps track of everything. We don't need to worry about usernames. Um, so we're going to loop through our list of ready players, put their usernames in there. Okay, let's see if all this, this complicated machinery works. Well, what should happen is our menu should start off blank with no other players inside. Ready, oh, our ready should be disabled. So if ready players, if we do have some ready players, then we our ready button should be enabled and have this functionality where it starts a match. But if we don't, then we want to set c.enabled equals false and change the text color to be grayed out. And um, we also need to change our join world. Our join world needs to be a little bit different. So back in menu game create, we do solo is going to create a, a solo match, but we do want to do this code right here. So we've got, we've got an on press and we've got an on forward. So our on press is not going to do any of that stuff. It's just going to do join world. So it's going to call join world. The servers should be reply with our message. And that's not going to actually create a match until we click ready. Yeah, this is what we want. So we want to start joining our world and then go over to the game menu game ready. Yeah. Okay. Working through all this stuff. Now, menu game join is similar where we also have an on press um, where we are joining world C join create. No, it's C join join. Yeah, this is only, this is join only. Not actually, I think that might be auto for now. Okay. Now, last thing is our menu game ready. Our actual ready button needs to call world set mission, mission key, triangles erase, save flush, world create world. So we've already received our join reply. But what the difference is going to be is that we're going to need to create another message where we can we can first join a game or a join a match. And then we can uh, and then we're kind of waiting in this lobby world for a second. And then we've got another message which says that the lobby player is ready. And once all the lobby players are ready, then world can, the server can send a message back to client saying, uh, the lobby is now ready and all the lobby players are ready to go. And then that will trigger the world to actually create. But for now, we're just going to create the world right here. So we're just going to hope that works. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay, I created a message and it failed because it already had a menu to for when it tried to tried to show tried to show the menu when it was already had another menu. But I think there's another way that I do. Oh, what is it? Ah, that's it right there. This is how you switch to this is how you can refresh a menu. Basically, you call menu get show. Yeah, yeah. Menu settings. This reloads the menu when we set our language. Reload the menu. Let's add the word refresh right in here because that's the word I was looking for. Okay, so we're getting a menu and then we're just calling show. And this needs to be called from where was that bit? Of, there it is menu show. We don't want to do that. We want to do menu dot show menu dot player id menu dot player type and menu dot id even might be better to actually create a function for that because check this out we're using this same methodology where we are we already in menu settings yeah we, we could have just reloaded them ah here's another place where we do the same thing m show m player id m player type menu achievements async okay that's using a different function though yeah let's create a new method in menu.h we've got show we've also got reload ah reshow it's gonna call it refresh we're gonna re be reusing our same player id player type all right i think that should do it what that'll do is it'll automatically clear the old menu so now we've got a basically a way to this is much better than having to always always try and remember how i did this in the past so let's find all the places where we're doing that okay we, here's one of them we're going to do auto ref m equals menu get cam index and then m dot refresh menu id so we can just do shorten that all down to just this also same thing here m m dot refresh menus menu settings here too refresh same thing not there there's another one Ca character edit oh a new name okay yeah that's another one m dot fresh wow there's a lot of them oh this is really Really good to do this because I didn't even know I was doing this in so many different places. This is what you would call coupled code. When you're writing code twice, it means that basically it's coupled because you, when you have to update a certain one of these, you technically should be updating all of them. And that creates a real big potential for bugs because if you didn't write it in a cohesive way, 
and you can break your you can cause a bug because you you only updated one out of 10 of those different instances so now we now we have this cohesive version of this function called menu.refresh um we're much less likely to cause a bug by only fixing one of those versus them all Let's actually do a, a search for dot show now oh, here's another one yep so this needs to be menu.refresh funk that does not need to be that this is starting up a new menu with the different id unused okay we don't need to worry about that face yeah yeah good okay we found one other issue one other place where it was doing that so that's great we found the, those all those places okay so now we're gonna run it and once again we're gonna create one of the clients, we're going to create a new match. And this time it shouldn't crash anymore when we create that new match because it's going to get a reply from the server saying that you joined this match and it's going to refresh the menu instead of assert failing because it already had a menu. We're now using this proven method of refreshing the menu. Oh man, what happened that time? Uh, I didn't have a cam index or player type. Okay, well, let's let's take a closer look by debugging. I didn't have a cam index. That means it's the. I mean, it's the. Oh, it's the main menu, not one of the individual menus. That's okay. Oh, we needed to assert B that cam index was not equal to cam invalid. And then player type, same thing. Player type is some, oh my God. Player type is something that's also invalid. I don't even need to debug anymore. Close the debugger. Okay, this menu refresh method, great method to have, but what we need to do is this. Cam index is supposed to not be camera in oh snow c camera invalid and player type is not equal to player invalid <laughs> okay let's try that again should be working oh good stuff oh dang it okay so the ready part worked it looks like we got our join reply no we got our set tick so we did get yeah we got our join reply with one player so the the server responded and said yeah i'm creating a match for you and then it set the tick but Oh, we don't, we don't need to assert that the tick is paused and check ready. Check the tick, check, or where is this? Oh, assert B tick is paused. We don't need to do this. So if world is mode, C mode void, then we do nothing. We're still waiting. We don't want to do this on clients ready thing, which will unpause and start the match and all that. We don't want to do any of that stuff. So want to keep on waiting. All right. I messed something up there. Whoop. Whoopsie days. It never created the main menu. It might've been this little code I tried to sneak in there. Nope, it wasn't that. It was that other bit of code I just snuck in there. Well, okay. So this part, it appears I was right to do that. Ah, this part right here, waiting in the lobby. Oh no, we wanna, uh, oh, we, if we have a menu, yeah. If we're, if we're mode void, and menu get any created the main menu and we're waiting in the lobby then just wait turn false but if we have mode void and we don't have the main menu yet then we return we, we actually do the on clients ready method okay that's how that should be all right cool got our main menu again and it even worked with this shortcut to jump straight to a character it's good to know okay now we're gonna go to new game co-op public yeah uh, ready, but we don't have our player name yet on the timed out server. N it never refreshed that menu and showed us our, our own player name. That should have happened. So what happened there? Um, let's figure it out. See the word join, join type public. Oh, okay. Don't ever want to time out if we're in mode void, create after timeout. If world is mode, T mode void, don't do the timeout. Okay. That's part of it. Um, but see, we got our join apply for our match, our co-op match. We got a seed. Oh, we didn't want to set world void void. We got this function called join world and we, yeah, here's where it's so our next mode must have been void still set. We probably want to set next mode and set next world then from the main, from the main menu. So we got menu game create. We want to do world set next world. And we need to look up a mission. Forget how to do that. So I'm looking through, oh, we can call set next world with with no mission. Oh, that would be void probably. Amount get mission, uh, which is called from load mission, which is called from set mission key, I believe. Okay, we need to set mission key. Set mission key for both joining and and creating. That should be. Oh yeah, it won't it won't matter for join auto. So we probably didn't need to do that. Oh oh well. It takes a while to recompile menus.cpp because it has so many uh, lambda functions. So that's why it's just taking an extra second here. We're we're doing a live stream. 
We got two clients we're loading and we're building one of the biggest source files that this game has to build. So that's why every time I rebuild, it takes so long. Okay, but we're back at the main menu. We're gonna start a new match, co-op. We're sitting here waiting. Still don't have the, okay, it's not forcing us into a world or anything. Yeah, it's, it's working, it's working, but somehow it's not adding those player names to our list. One thing I noticed in the render system, we've got this list of menus that where the character is visible, we need to add in our our new um, menus, menu game ready and menu game select. Both of those are going to be in our character visible menu IDs. Uh, that probably is going to error us out. This menu game select is not created yet, so let's create that. Yep, we got that error. Okay, so menu game select is just a dub function for now. That'll at least get us to not error. Okay, what happened with if the main menu got the where's the join join type public mode ship world dungeon good it created the right kind of world or tra created the right kind of join type and it got back a reply co-op world dungeon mode ship that's great that's exactly what we wanted but but for some reason oh and then much later i got another join reply for the other player so for some reason it got our join reply but it didn't it didn't refresh the menu so on world no on message join reply we got our join reply yeah i got okay so we got to this got log join reply if did join reply then process okay i need to see whether that variable is enabled so i got i want to run this in debug mode that did join reply variable is pretty important i think what it's saying there is that it, it's waiting for both players to join before it processes the join reply okay sorry about the sound effects here okay what's our join reply False. Ah, of course. Yeah, it hasn't done that yet. You only get one of these once. Oh, uh, we wanna we wanna process these ready players every time we get a join reply. Okay, so now I've made a, a function called update ready players. Just took that functionality out of process join reply. And we're gonna put a we're gonna reference it right in on message join reply, that above the join reply. And every time we get one of these join replies, call us update ready players method. Okay, that should that should do it. Hopefully that should do it. Oh, also we need to refresh menu game ready. Okay. And this is our, for each I N this is message join reply. God, we don't need to do this. We can do far auto ref. Do we need the I? No. For auto ref join player in message join reply dot player. Ah, simpler. I like it. Okay. They are ready players. No. Oh, yes. We have wizard foo in here now. All right. Okay. See what's up with this guy if he joins a game. Oh, look at that. That's got both players in here. Oh my God. This is a big moment. All the code we've been writing on this stream is finally working. Oh, sweet. Okay. What happens if I click ready? Probably isn't going to work. I don't know what's going on with these two clients, but that was huge. Oh, our server even failed. Oh, wait. This guy went back to the main menu. How about that? Net send failed. Connection was zero. Okay. This is going to make this uh, on disconnect method a little bit safer. If not MC or not MC.con. No, good at con dash one. Da, 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 da. They're a little safer. Okay, that should not assert fail the server now. Okay, let's just, okay, this is really good. We got some good stuff all done today. I'm gonna kind of recap things. That's gonna be it for today's stream. Um, So, so far in the progress of writing all this online co-op code for Wraithbinder, we have a lot of progress made and we we gotten it. So basically two clients can sort of start up in this debug mode where they skip the menu and they jump straight into an online match together. And we got them starting in sync. We got them pausing and unpausing in sync. We have a whole bunch of other things that happen in, well, this didn't work this time. Anyways, now we're transitioning into a new thing where we can actually create multiplayer matches from the main menu. And that's introducing a whole bunch of other mechanic, machinery, other types of code that need to be all created to get these menus to work correctly, to sort of act like a lobby where both players click ready. Just a few seconds ago, we had both of these clients jumping into a mat, into a lobby together and it said both of their names in here, but now it doesn't for some reason. Let's see what happens when we try creating a new game again. Okay, now we don't have our own name anymore. Uh, hope. Well, that time it worked. Got both of our names in. Okay, but anyway, there's a lot of little issues to sort out, but this is some good news so far that we can get 
at least this, right? At least we have two clients sort of waiting in a lobby together. And the next step is to get all these little kinks flushed out and also create a new type of message that will be like a lobby ready message. So when one player clicks ready, it sends off a lobby me lobby ready message to the server. And then the server waits for all players to click ready before it actually starts the match. And then it'll send back like a lobby ready reply saying, all right, everybody's ready to go. Let's get this buddy started. And it'll start the match all in sync with both players that way. So the main thing that's been happening now on this live stream is that we're switching from this sort of debug mode where I skip the menu and sort of jump straight into a match to actually being able to start a match, being able to choose what match you want to join, being able to click when you're ready as a player, getting all this sort of good stuff um, out of the way so players can play these multiplayer matches like you would expect you would. So yeah, um, that's going to be it for today's stream. Next live stream will not be next Wednesday. It will be the Wednesday after. Um, so not Ju not June 20 something, but maybe Ju it's like it might even be July. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, and then the uh, the online um, the uh, the next beta is going to be July 14th through the 25th. If you want to play this, play this online co-op with people sign up for the beta all you got to do is go to the steam page click the request access button and you will instantly be added to the beta list but the game won't be playable in your steam library until july 14th so if you're in, if you're interested in this game i encourage you to join the the beta and help give me some feedback with this this online co-op this is going to be the first version of the game that's going to have online co-op so there's, a, there's probably going to be some issues i'm going to need your help as a as a developer, sort of ironing out these little things. So appreciate you. Um, yeah, that's it for this live stream. Thanks for watching. And I uh, will see you in two weeks. Later. Later.